Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today is part two of my series about moving your home folder from your Mac to an external hard drive. It allows you to get all your data off your internal drive, 90% of it anyway, and move it to an external drive. That drive always has to be plugged into the Mac. I've made this video in 10 steps. So this is for people who have already been using their Mac. I think this is really the way to go. I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and buy a brand new Mac mini with the base storage. Probably put a little more money into the RAM situation because I wanna use this as my main video editing computer going forward. So stay tuned for that. I'll be doing the exact thing I'm doing here today, which I'm using a Mac Studio. I know I'm not using a Mac Mini, but I will be doing it with a Mac Mini going forward. And then I'll report back in a new video on how it's all going using my home folder on an external drive. So let's get to it. 10 easy steps to set up your home folder on an external drive. And always have a backup of your data. I highly recommend backing up everything now before you move forward and do this. Just for safety purposes, you should always have a backup anyway, but you wanna have a current backup just in case something doesn't go according to plan. Step one is to turn off your iCloud apps one by one and then log out of your Apple account. The reason we're doing this, number one, is if you don't log out of your Apple account and you try and copy your home folder to your external drive, you will get an error and it won't let you copy the home folder. We wanna remove all the iCloud data that is taking up our internal hard drive space. So you go to System Preferences, scroll to the top there, Apple Account, click on iCloud, and click See All. And then you wanna turn off everything. And it'll say, hey, you're gonna be removing your photos from your internal storage. And yes, we wanna delete all our iCloud data from the Mac to clean up the internal storage before we go move our home folder to a new location. And all of our iCloud data will remain in the cloud. And this will just free up space on the internal hard drive. And once everything is turned off, we want to log out of our Apple account. Because if you're still logged into your Apple account and we go to transfer our home folder with our hidden user library, we'll talk about that in a little bit, you might wind up getting an error saying your user library is busy and can't be transferred or something to that effect. So we want to be logged out of our Apple account. And congratulations, you've just cleaned up a huge amount of space on your internal drive. Step two, we're gonna plug in our external hard drive and we're gonna format it in APFS. So I'm just gonna name the external drive Home X, as in Home External. And I'm using the Zyke Enclosure with the Team Group NVMe, links in the description. And you can get 20% off on the Zyke drive using my coupon code. When you get a new drive, a lot of them are gonna be formatted in XFAT. That's why we're reformatting the drive in APFS. You do not wanna be doing this with an XFAT formatted hard drive. APFS is Apple's file system. And we just hit erase and it formats our drive for us. And now we're ready to move our home folder. But first, how to make the internal user library visible. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a quick little trick. We're in my internal home folder and you don't see the user library. So we're gonna go up to view in the finder and go down to show view options. And to my surprise, cause I didn't know this existed till I stumbled upon it, show library folder. You turn it on and bingo, there's your hidden library folder and it stays visible from then on, even after reboots and even after copying the folder to the new location. And that little checkbox is only available when you have your active home folder open. Otherwise, it's not there. But all that being said, if the library isn't visible in the home folder, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna get copied anyway. But we will go back to our user library once this process is done so we can delete more data off our internal drive and any other invisible files will get copied as well when you copy the entire home folder. Step three, copy our home folder. So now we're just gonna drag over our home folder onto our external drive and it will ask for your administrative password. You put that in, you hit okay. And once this is done copying, we're going to then copy our applications folder onto the external drive as well. 
But before we copy the applications folder, I'm just going to show you that the hidden files got copied. First off, you can see the user library is in both folders. And now I just hit command shift period. And you can see our hidden files have been copied to the new location as well. So you don't need to worry about them. They will get copied when you drag and drop the home folder to the external drive. Okay, step four, we're going to copy our applications over to the external drive. You can put it inside your home directory if you want, or you can have it outside. For an example, I'm just putting it outside, so they're two separate things, but you could move the applications into the home directory if you want to. All of Apple's internal apps, they do not get copied. Only the apps that you've downloaded or installed yourself get copied, but apps like Final Cut Pro, GarageBand, they do get copied. So just the built-in system apps, the apps that came with your Mac, they do not get copied. They live on the internal applications folder and they only take up about 1.2 gigs. So we freed up 125 gigs just from moving our applications to the external drive. Okay, and this is just applications. It's mainly two games downloaded from the Apple App Store that's eating up all the space. But you're getting the idea. We are saving a huge amount of space by moving our applications to the external home folder. And if you're on Sequoia 15.1, Apple has now added an option in the App Store settings where you can select an external drive to copy any apps that are larger than one gig. But what's weird is they don't let you choose a folder on that external drive just the drive itself, which means you're gonna to have to move it into your applications folder once it's downloaded. Step five, we're gonna activate our external home folder, and that is gonna be your home folder from this point onward. But just remember your external drive has to always be connected to your Mac. So now we're gonna tell the Mac to use our external home folder. And to do that, we click on users and groups, and then hold down the control key and let up on advanced options. So we go put in our username and password, and then we go to home directory, and we select choose, and then we go find our external hard drive that has the home folder that we copied over on it and our applications, there it is. And make sure to select the name not the hard drive or the applications folder. You want to select the username that has all the folders in it. Double check your home directory path and make sure it's correct because if it's not, you're going to have problems. So it should be volumes, the hard drive name, and then your username. And we click OK and we get the message saying we need to restart our computer for this to take effect. And sometimes this little error window pops up saying system preferences has canceled the restart. Just hit try again and then reboot the computer. And once you're booted into your new home folder, you may have to go through a few prompts again with Apple. I just can't remember because I've done this so many times now. Okay, on the right, we have our new home folder location on our external home drive. And on the left, we have our old original home folder. And as you can see, the icons on the right have the little insignias on them showing the movies, the music, and on the left, they're plain folders. And this is how Apple shows you you which home user folder is active. And next you log back into your Apple account, turn on all your apps that you turned off and let the downloading begin to the new library location. And as you can see, I've got my external drives library open. iCloud Drive, now that it's turned back on, is downloading its data. My iCloud photo library is downloading in the new location in the pictures folder. And all your iCloud apps that you turned off will now re-download the data to the new location. Now I'm connected via Ethernet because Wi-Fi will take much longer. Step seven is to delete the apps from your internal app folder to clear up space on your internal drive. Now we're gonna delete all our applications that are on the internal drive. And you'll see, you'll get this message saying 43 items cannot be moved because you can't delete the built-in system apps that Apple gives you when you first boot up your computer. Those are not deletable. Ones that you download from the App Store are, we have moved all our apps to the external drive, except for these built-in Apple system apps. 
which are not movable and they're not deletable, but they only take up 1.5 gigs of space. So it makes it really easy to delete all the apps that we don't want on the internal drive anymore because we now have them on our external drive. Okay, folks, we're almost at the end. We just got to do a little house cleaning on our internal drive now. And now you can go to your internal drive and documents folder and delete whatever you have in there because you've already copied all of it to the external drive. As you can see, there are two folders in my documents that I can now get rid of on the internal drive because they're now on the external drive. It's a very good idea to keep your path bar open so you know which drive you're working on. You don't want to make a blunder here and delete something you don't want to delete. You can go in and clean house and just get rid of a lot of the excess stuff that no longer needs to be on the internal drive. So you can clean out as much stuff out of the user library as you want to because everything is now on the external drive. It's all been duplicated. And one folder of interest is your cache folder, also located in the internal user library. That is a thing that just fills up on a daily basis from you surfing the web and whatnot. And you can just go in there and clean house and completely erase all the things that are in the cache folder. There's a lot of stuff hidden in the application support folder, which lives in the user library folder. For instance, Steam stores its games there. Mobile Sync, your iOS backups are in that Mobile Sync folder. Look at that, it's 91 gigs because I backed up my iPhone. You can go into those individual folders and delete games and delete iOS backups and clear up a lot of space on your internal drive. And that's the whole reason we're doing this exercise is to clear up our internal storage and not have to pay the Apple tax to spend a bunch of money on the internal drive when we can spend $200, for instance, on a very fast external two terabyte drive as opposed to 800. And now we're looking at the system library, not to be confused with the user library. The system library will also have data that's stored in it, like Logic, for instance, stores samples in there, GarageBand does, so that all users can access the files. And you can just leave them there, but if you want to, you can also move them to your user account and then point the application, like Logic, to use that folder of samples and then you can delete it off your internal system library. But because it's a shared library for all users that use the computer, you could be deleting data that they would want to access as well. So unless it's a really bulky sample library or something to that extent, I would just leave it alone. So just to show you how much we've cleaned up, we have 158 gigs on our external home folder and internally that home folder has under four gigs. So I'd say we're in pretty good shape. And now from here on out, we'll be using our external home folder. Step nine, how to get your external apps to appear in Launchpad using sim links. So we're gonna click on Launchpad in the dock and we're gonna see that Blackmagic Disk Speed Test is no longer available because Launchpad only sees the apps that are in the internal applications folder. And once you've moved a lot of your apps, there's going to be a lot of these little white icons with a big question mark. So you just hold down the option key and remove it from Launchpad because Launchpad only works with your internal applications folder. It will not find the apps on the external applications folder, but there is a workaround to get your apps on your external drive to show up in Launchpad. So we're gonna launch Terminal, which is located in your internal applications utilities folder. And we're gonna type in ln space dash s space. And then we're gonna go find the application that we wanna create a sim link with. I'm going to my external user applications folder and I'm dragging over Blackmagic speed disk. And as you can see, it created the path there. No need to type all that information. You can just drag and drop it into the terminal. And now we're gonna to go to our internal applications folder and I'm just gonna drag it into the window as well. 
and then click on the terminal window because it was actually in the background just then. You want it in the foreground and then just hit the enter key. And now our sim link has been created. We're gonna open up the internal applications folder and there it is. So now let's open up Launchpad and there it is. Blackmagic Speed Test has now been added to the list of apps in Launchpad. So the app resides in the external applications folder, but it is now launchable from Launchpad. So you don't have to do this, but it's pretty cool that you can do it. And there's a lot of good use cases for creating symbolic links, like to your sample library and things of that nature. And while you can make an alias of an app and move it to the applications folder, it's not going to show up in Launchpad. And like I showed in the previous video, it's a great idea to just add an additional user, make it an administrator, give it a different name than the one we're using, and it's just there for backup. If for some reason our external drive goes down, we'll be able to get into the computer and troubleshoot any problems that we might have had with the drive itself, or if we left the drive at work or something, because you can take your user with you and connect it to another computer. Of course, it's got to be an Apple Silicon computer. It's not going to work going from Apple Silicon to Intel. And we hit create user and there we are. We have a backup user. Okay, now we got to talk about home security and I'm not talking about surveillance cameras in your house. I'm talking about your external home folder that we have now created. While your external home drive is protected by the Mac you're using it with because you have to type in a password at login, if you take that drive and plug it into another Mac like you would any external hard drive, guess what? Everything is accessible. I connected the Zyke drive to my Mac Pro. I can go to the desktop, I can go to the documents, I can go to the photos. Everything on the drive is right there for the taking. So that's something to consider when you're doing this. The reality is, is I can boot your computer in recovery mode, go into share disk mode, and connect your computer to my computer and I can grab all your internal data that's on your internal home folder as well, just like I did with the external drive. Unless you have your whole system drive encrypted with File Vault, then I would need the drive's encrypted password. I tried encrypting the external home folder, but then I wasn't able to log in. I got an error when I went to reboot and log into the same user account. But I wanna look into this further because there is a a security risk here of somebody just swiping your drive and having all of your data. I know you can password protect and encrypt individual folders, so that may be a workaround. I'm going to look into this further and make a video about it, so stay tuned. Okay, thanks for watching. I cannot thank you guys enough because my last video just I don't know what happened. It went through the roof. I got 200,000 views in like 48 hours, which is unheard of for my channel. I'm hoping it at least helps out a lot of people to be able to do this themselves. And that's basically what my channel is about, putting out the information, trying to help people out. Maybe I'll make a little money on the side, you know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate you all tuning in, giving me those positive vibes, and I will see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.